We can exasperate trying to dismantle a pallet. But sometimes, to make some small woodworking projects, like this small planter that I will make, we just need to cut the pieces of wood we need. I wanted to see how this pallet wood looks after planing it with my homemade thinness planer. The problem is that this wood always has a lot of nails, and sometimes we cannot see them. So, before planing it, I recommend to use a small metal detector. I use a jigsaw to cut the pallet boards. I cut the four legs of the planter. I use a meter saw with my table saw sliding fence as a stop block to cut all four pieces right to the same length. I make a clean cross cut in one end of the bars. I mark the length I want in one of my boards and I adjust my stop block to cut them all right to the same length. The strips I use for the legs are 38 by 38 mm. The half is 19 mm. The diameter of the rotor bit I will use to root the grooves is 10 mm. The half is 5 mm. Then I have to adjust the fence so that the distance from the fence to the bit is 19 minus 5 is equal to 14 mm. I leave the rotor bit until it protrudes 1 cm and I put a stop block in the fence, at a distance of 28 cm from the rotor bit. With the help of a pusher, I root a groove in one side. The vacuum cleaner hose that I have by the stop block takes most of the sawdust. It takes even the sawdust collected against the stop block. Even so, it would be better to leave a 2 or 3 mm gap below the stop block because the vacuum cleaner always leaves there some sawdust and that sawdust blocks the strip before it reaches the stop block. I turn the strip by 90 degrees and I root another groove in the leg. When the vacuum cleaner system of the router table is not suitable for a task, we can make a test to see which direction will the sawdust take. And if it is possible, we put there the vacuum cleaner hose. I root two grooves in all four planter legs. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, before I use the planer, I must use the metal detector. Because I don't want any surprise with a pallet nail. Now I can plane the bars. I adjust my homemade thinness planer and I plane all the bars. I adjust the planer again, and I plane the other face of the bars. I plane the bars once and again, until they fit in the groups I made in the planter legs. And here we can see how the sides of the planter will look. In this case it was not necessary, but I also joined the edge of the boards with the planer. I must admit that I think this is a bit dangerous, because if the board is very tight between the planer and the fence, I have to push hard, and if the pusher fails my hand could end in the blaze. So while I don't have a guard, I must adjust the fence so that the bars go loose between the planer and the fence. 
To make the boards fit, I must use a chisel to cut the round shape that the rotor bit leaves in the end of the grooves. To put all the parts together, I will use this glue, which is suitable to use in outdoor woodworking projects. I pour a good amount of glue in the grooves, and I use a small brush to spread it. While the glue is not dry, it is very easy to clean out the brush with some water. I put the bars in the groove, with some glue in the edge of the bars, too. Now I fit them in the groove in another planter leg. I must make sure that the free grooves in both legs are facing to the same side. I must make sure that the bars enter to the bottom of the grooves, or I will get a twisted planter box. I can use a block to hit on the bars with a hammer, until they enter all the way down to the bottom. I clean the excess of glue before it dries. I put together the pieces of another side of the planter box. And now I put the remainder bars in the free grooves of one of the sides I have mounted before. I put glue in the grooves in the other side and I complete the box shape of this planter. make sure all the bars are perfectly inside the grooves, and I hold everything with a couple of straps while the glue dries. I measure the diagonals to make sure I have a square planter box. I plane both sides of the bars that I will use for the bottom and for the top frame. I don't mind the thick of the bars. All I need is that all the bars for the bottom and mainly all the bars for the frame are the same thick. I cut the bars to the width I want. It is not necessary a lot of precision. I can cut 2 or 3 mm wider, so I can join later the edges. When I adjust the fence to join the edge of the bars, I let the board a bit loose between the fence and the plane. As I said before, it can be dangerous if I need a lot of strength to push the board. I join the four bars that I will use for the bottom. I join the four bars that I will use for the top frame. And I join the two strips that will support the bottom boards. I cut the strips to the right length. And I glue them in the bottom, one in front of the other. I cut the bottom boards. When I put the bars on the bottom strips, I don't want the ends of the bars to go tight against the sides of the planter. They should go a bit loose. I make a meter cut in one end of all the top frame bars. I measure and make a mark in one of the bars, and I will use it to adjust a stop block to cut all four boards right to the same length. I put the board in my circular saw meter jig, and before I meter cut, I used the board to adjust a stop block. As you can see, sometimes I need to move my meter jig on the table, 
until I can clamp all I need to clamp. I pour some glue in the meter joints and I put together all the pieces of the top frame. Some clamps and the pieces I cut from the bars will help me to keep flush the meter joints while the glue dries. I could leave an opening between the side bars and the top frame or I could cut the pieces of the legs that protrude over the side bars. But I decided to cut the top of the legs plus a strip piece of the bars. It looks like I didn't use enough glue to keep that in place, so now I can not rest it against the fence while I cut the other two sides of the planter. So I ended up using my hand saw. And then I use a small hand plane. And finally I sand the cuts. And because I am already using the sandpaper, I slightly sand all the planter box. And I apply a wood protector stain. I should apply two or three coats, but I will apply them later on, when I see it needs it. I apply one coat of stain to every piece of the planter, even to the top frame, but here I did not realize that my camera ran out of juice. I glue the top frame to the top of the legs, to see if this glue also works on stained wood. Well, the truth is that I didn't glue it before to apply the stain with this. And this is the glue. After waiting more than 24 hours, it didn't dry well, and it didn't grab the wood, so now I will apply epoxy, that is what I have by hand, and I don't want to use nails or screws. I mix and I pour it on top of the legs. And now I put the frame on top of the planter box. Measuring to make sure that I center it. and I put some weight on it, until the epoxy dries. Now I can put the plastic pot inside the planter box, but it looks like it is too big. Luckily I can remove the bottom bars. I didn't glue them, because that is how I put the pot inside the planter. I put the pot inside, and I replace the bottom bars. I put some soil inside the plastic pot. I put the plant in the pot. And I fill it with some more soil. And now I just need a nice place to put my planter box. If you want to see how I made my table saw and my thickness planer, and all the projects I made to improve my shop, you can go to my woodworking channel. And if you like my videos, remember that you can subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.